when the going gets tough the tough get going yeah huawei will relate to that with all the conflict going on between the chinese telecommunications manufacturer and the us government huawei's future looks uncertain to say at the least while this is true to some extent its commendable efforts towards a self-reliant future looks promising if you don't know what this is all about, let me give you a quick summary first. The Trump administration's executive order kept Huawei in the entity list, which means it can no longer be in business with any US-owned company. Though no official evidence has yet been made public, the US fears that the Chinese government can use Huawei as a backdoor to spy on it, thus classifying the company as a threat to national security. The key giveaway from this is the fact that the US government has not revealed any proof of its claims to the public and we as public can derive two conclusions from it. First, this whole thing is an elaborate tactic to suppress the superior technologies of Huawei to gain an edge in the US-China trade war. Second, since Huawei is legally liable to submit all of its resources to the Chinese government in case of any necessity, the US is just taking necessary precautions against it. There have been reports that the US government has indeed disclosed its evidences against Huawei to the company heads of some selected tech giants, but the details of it remain a mystery as well. More importantly, the ban hasn't effectively been immediate, as the US government has been a little soft on Huawei by providing a temporary waiver of 90 days for two straight times, the last of which was supposed to end in November 2019. And once again, the US government has added another six months to the waiver. Though the major concern from the ban to Huawei is the expansion of its 5G technologies, its smartphone business is also taking a considerable hit. After the ban, many US-based firms like Intel and Qualcomm cut ties with Huawei, but none of them left as big an impact as Google. Despite the company manufacturing its own chipsets and memory cards for its smartphones, the company is still reliant on Google's proprietary Google Mobile Services or GMS. It further is important to note that Android itself is open source, but GMS isn't. This means that Huawei can legally use AOSP or Android open source project to ship its devices with the latest version of Android, but it will not use Google apps like Maps, YouTube or Play Store. This is not a problem in Huawei's homeland of China since Google does not exist there. However, it is a global company that officially sells its smartphones in over 170 different countries. And that's a lot of markets to just pass over. And as a way to overcome the absence of Googles in its smartphones, Huawei has apparently been working on its own operating system for quite some time now. The now unveiled Harmony slash Hongmeng OS is its answer to Android, which will eventually be found in the company's ecosystem of products. Sadly, the reveal was made on Huawei's TV and the company has openly admitted that its OS isn't ready enough to be powering smartphones. While a separate operating system sounds super exciting, Huawei just knows how difficult it is to build one. So the company is pushing for Huawei Mobile Services or HMS for its answer to GMS. But before jumping into HMS, let's briefly discuss what it's trying to replace, GMS. Essentially, it is the library of Google's proprietary applications like Gmail, YouTube, Play Store, etc. or GApps and its APIs that run on most Android smartphones. It is also necessary for that Google experience across your devices where you can open a tab on the Chrome browser on your PC and then send that tab on your phone to continue browsing. Just an example. It sets parameters and provides APIs using which developers can embed Google services like Maps into their app. And because it's proprietary, you cannot simply download it and use it like an Android app. There is so much more to what GMS is and how it's necessary, but I'll end it right here. Now let's get into HMS and how it hopes to save Huawei. Like how GMS is Google's collection of apps and services for the optimal Android ecosystem, HMS is a part of Huawei Consumer Business Group and the collection of apps and services for Huawei ecosystem of devices. Instead of Google ID, you will have a Huawei ID and so on and so forth. HMS has a set of applications and background services that work together to provide a seamless and connected experience across multiple devices. 
This ecosystem is made up of HMS apps, HMS core and capabilities and third-party applications. Here, HMS apps is the library of apps meant to replace similar Google apps. The most significant of them all, Huawei App Gallery, is the official app distribution platform for Huawei. Competing against the front runner Google's Play Store in this stage will not be a piece of cake. As of now, the Play Store boasts an estimated 2.8 million apps according to the data from Statistia.com, while Apple's App Store comes in second with 1.8 million. Though the need for Huawei's own App Store feels crucial right now, App Gallery has been in existence from a long time ago. It was officially launched in China in 2011, while the rest of the world was introduced to the Huawei App Gallery in the Q1 of 2018 with the launch of its P20 series of smartphones. In the present context, it serves Huawei and Honor smartphone users in over 170 countries with 390 plus million monthly active users and around 180 billion downloads a year. With such a big portion of the market, app developers would like to get on it as well. So what's being done to bring these two together? A billion dollars. Yes, you heard that right. Huawei is betting on getting global app developers into its ecosystem by investing a whopping $1 billion under the Shining Star program. In the international market, Huawei phones will be really hard to sell if the majority of apps and games that we all use aren't available in the Huawei app gallery. So apart from making its HMS core systems available, familiar and easy to the developers, there is also an added advantage to the developers releasing their apps and games on the app gallery. Huawei is offering a smaller charge of 15% for one-time app purchases, while Google takes in 30% of the price for it, which has been widely criticized by developers worldwide. This is one of the reasons why Epic Games decided against launching their mega hit Fortnite on Play Store and also why Tinder removed its payment mechanism from the platform. Apart from the Huawei App Gallery, there are other notable HMS apps too. Huawei Browser is a web browser with over 200 million monthly active users. On the other hand, Huawei Mobile Cloud is the company's answer to Google Drive for cloud storage. But unlike the competition, you only get 5 GB of free cloud storage with plans for paid storage of up to 2 TB. Similarly, it has over 160 million monthly active users. Moreover, Huawei Music, Huawei Video and Huawei Assistant are some of the other HMS apps not quite as widespread as the ones above. As you might have guessed already, these three look to replace Google's Play Music or YouTube Music, YouTube and Google Assistant respectively. HMS as well as HMS apps incorporate Huawei's chips, device and cloud capabilities and integrates HMS core services, tools and platforms for IDE development and testing. Here, the HMS core is oriented towards developers and offers APIs more or less similar to GMS. For this, Huawei has opened a total of 14 HMS core services with 9 essential services and 5 growth services with more coming soon. These services are a collection of software development frameworks that give developers quick access to the Huawei ecosystem, thus letting them build apps with ease. Let me briefly go through some of them. Account Kit is Huawei's version of Google Play Services Sign-In, which facilitates simple, secure and quick sign-in and authorization functions. As a result, users can simply use their Huawei ID as a sign-in option for any app without having to go through all the hassle of signing up. In the same way, Google Maps SDK will be substituted by Huawei's Map Kit, which has been made available in the overseas developers from October 2019. HMS Core Game Service will be Huawei's answer to Google Play Games, allowing developers to easily embed in-game functionalities and players to sign in and keep a track of their gaming records. After all is said and done, one question still remains. Is it enough? Will Huawei's efforts and investment result in noteworthy outcomes? Can Google and its suite of applications be replaced by Huawei at this stage? Can people really go through all the hassle to sideload a vast majority of apps and games that will never see the light of day in Huawei's app gallery? And more importantly, should they? Well, the answer to that should is an obvious no. You're paying top money to own a product and having to compromise on it does not make sense, no matter how excellent the hardware is. While some of the most popular apps like Facebook, Spotify, etc. work flawlessly on GMS-less Huawei smartphones, the ones from Google don't. 
their web versions too, but the apps just don't, not fully at least. Because of the trade ban, apps from Huawei-owned companies simply cannot be distributed on Huawei's official distribution platform. Some of you may be considering sideloading APK files to install third-party apps and games into the device, which is a proven method to get them working partially or completely. But that right there is unnecessary and avoidable trouble. And add to that the fact that some apps cannot simply run without GMS, then the problem starts to get even worse. And then there is the question of accessibility. Like I said before, Huawei does not need to worry about their customer base in China. The market outside, however, is a different story altogether, which Huawei needs to focus on immediately. Therefore, as a first step, Huawei and its sub-brand Honor have been in the talks with top app developers in India to build HMS-integrated applications for its platform. Yes, that makes sense. With the rising popularity of internet usage in the country, India is now the second largest smartphone consumer in the world surpassing the US, while China still holds the top spot. Huawei is set to launch HMS in India very soon and will be providing incentives to the developers to build apps to support their ecosystem of devices. In the initial stage, the company is looking to launch the top 100 to 150 apps of every country into the app gallery. As for the Indian developers, Huawei has set aside up to $17,000 per app integration reward for its billion-dollar program I talked about earlier. Moreover, the apps from the Indian developers will also be made available in Europe and other regions of the world. This is obviously going to take a while, but if this becomes successful, Huawei will finally get the much-needed boost to survive this unsolved situation that the company has found itself in. With India secured, it's only a matter of time that HMS enters other parts of the continent like Middle East, South Asia, and eventually Europe and other regions of the world. I may be thinking out loud at this point, but I believe that is a very probable outcome. Then again, there have been several projects which centered around addressing the trouble Huawei has found itself in, a Google-less existence. Though small in number, the mere fact that Huawei is not the first and the only company to act on such a situation is a morale booster to say at the least. Take the project E for example. Now, this does not exist because of any trade ban or whatever. Rather, the E Foundation is a non-profit organization that builds privacy-focused OS on top of AOSP with Google's app and services replaced by something else. Basically, E is a custom ROM like Lineage, Bootleggers, etc. with one major difference, there is no Google. It isn't looking to compete with what Google is offering, no, not at all. What it tries to do is facilitate a small group of enthusiastic people who value privacy and preservation of their personal data from those data-hungry corporations. So there you have it, Huawei is in dire straits. yes. You know that, we know that, and Huawei knows that as well. Will its shining star program, the Huawei Mobile Services HMS Core, deem successful enough to be able to pass the muster among its consumers outside of China? We hope it does and wish the company all the best for its strenuous odyssey ahead. So that was all for our video on how Huawei is fighting for its Google-less future. Do let us know in the comments below if you like this video. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I'll see you in the next one.